It all starts with this guy. This guy, this guy is Lewis Rineri. According to the movie The Big Shot, this guy changed your life more than Michael Jordan, YouTube and iPod put together. He was a born trader at Solomon Brothers when he came up with the idea of mortgage backed securities or MBS. This is your average person's mortgage. When he needs to buy a house, he approaches the lender. The lender gives him the money to buy the house in the form of a loan. And the house owner pays back the lender principal plus interest in the form of monthly repayments. This is a basic single house mortgage contract. Now if the house owner defaults that is he refuses to pay his monthly payment, the lender is at risk of not receiving his principal back. Now a big investment bank calls up the lender and buys up that contract. From the money received by the lender, it makes more loans to fund other house owners. Now if the house owner defaults on its monthly payments, the lender is not at the risk. The risk is transferred to the investment bank. Now the banks borrowed billions of dollars to purchase thousands of similar mortgage contracts and they bundled them all together into mortgage backed securities. This was a simple, easy but a brilliant idea as even if few homeowners default, payments from other houses would make sure that the intrinsic value of this security or contract is preserved. Now the experts at the investment bank converted the existing MBS to a complicated financial instrument known as collateral debt obligation or the infamous CDO. CDO has layers or tranches as they were called. The low return branch bearing low risk profile, the moderate return branch with moderate risk profile and the high return branch with the high risk profile. These layers were then sold off to investors according to their risk profile. This was a win-win situation as this gave investors an asset to invest their money to grow and for the banks which made huge sums of money in commission fees without bearing any risk since now if the house owner is default investors bore that risk now banks were making billions by repackaging mortgages and selling them to investors for commission fees but after a certain point banks ran out of homes to put in those bonds as after all there were only so many houses belonging to people with good enough income to afford them so banks started putting more and more risky loans in these mbs These loans had shady characteristics like variable interest rates, zero down payment and no income verification. These type of loans were called subprime loans. Banks themselves borrowed huge sums of money to buy these risky loans, thereby increasing their leverage. Leverage represents the amount of debt used to finance a firm's assets. The top 5 US investment banks increased their leverage rapidly from 2003 to 2007. By 2007, They were all at around 30x levels meaning they had borrowed 30 times their working capital as the number of risky loans went up default rates increased more and more people couldn't repay their mortgages initially it wasn't a problem as house prices were doubling every few years and hence the bank would recover the money by selling the homes that have been defaulted upon in the market but as the default numbers skyrocketed through the roof There were more and more houses in the market up to a point where supply exceeded the demand and the house prices started plummeting. So initially house prices increased at fast pace as anyone could get a loan and purchase it. But when the default numbers went through the roof, there were more and more houses to be sold in the market than the buyers and the house prices started decreasing. They decreased rapidly. Now as there were no monthly repayments there was no money coming into the CDOs and thus for the investors who purchased these CDOs they stopped receiving any returns investors stopped buying these CDOs and its demand went to zero Now the banks who were heavily invested in these assets began to experience a liquidity crisis that is they had no one to sell these CDOs to they were basically sitting on worthless asset which they couldn't sell Now these financial institutions already over leveraged were suddenly in huge debt as they can't repay their own loan used to make these risky investments the over leverage was kind of a ticking bomb which finally exploded in fact the total debt of top 5 us investment banks was over 4.1 trillion dollars that is about 30% of us nominal gdp for 2007 these factors i have talked about is to get you know the gist of what happened during 2007 and 2008 
like incorrect pricing of risk by the banks, increasing complexity of financial instruments like synthetic CDOs and CDO squared, deregulation under Alan Greenspan, and easy credit conditions. Do subscribe for more such videos, share the video, like if you like my video, comments will always be appreciated.